So it has been roughly two weeks since Intel launches its 12th gen core processors. So during that time, I believe a lot of you guys have seen a lot of numbers and you probably have your own thoughts on what it's all about. So this time, we finally managed to have some extra time with another motherboard from MSI this time, which is the Z690 Force Wi-Fi, which is technically a mid-end, probably a mid-end Z690 motherboard for those of you who want some of the overclocking features, which enthusiasts might still appreciate but without the extra premiums which most users might not probably be using at all okay now starting with the design if you've seen the z690 carbon wi-fi before yes the design is technically the same but the Force Y5 is actually in silver color, as we see for all the heat sinks around it. So this gives you another choice if you don't really want to go with the all black like usual and want to go with a different kind of look for your system if you're one of the early adopters for the Intel 12th gen CPUs. Compared to the MEG series motherboards which has plenty of enthusiast great features like onboard buttons, some of the included add-in cards or extra accessories that comes with the MEG series lineup. The MPG Z690 Carbon or Force Wi-Fi doesn't have those extra things. So that will somehow keep the cost down. But you do get some interesting accessories inside the box as well. Such as, I don't know, the keychain screwdriver <laughs> for some reason. I don't really like to use that because it's too small but some of you might find it good because of its size but all in all the accessories is kept to minimum which is very simple and you don't get any extra unnecessary or things you will not even use at all compared to the high-end stuff and for the layout itself we can see that it will support 4 DDR5 beams. yes this is one of the DDR5 motherboards which compared to the DDR4 will be able to support the newest DDR5 memory modules if you manage to get your hands on one. Aside from the new DDR5 memory support, the Z690 chipset also supports PCIe 5. Finally, a new standard but as of now we don't see much or actually we don't see any PCIe 5 device for the consumer yet so you might have to wait for a little while before you can see any of those. Now for the storage, because we don't have any PCIe 5 storage devices as what I mentioned just now, you will probably have to still go with PCIe Gen 4 or Gen 3 SSDs. Though they are still fast enough for most users and honestly, not many of us can tell the difference if it's only used for gaming or very light usage. But compared to the previous gen Z590 and Z490, the Z690 can finally support PCIe Gen 4 SSD on all the slots. Though compared to what we have seen in the past, there's a lot more lanes this time. So you get one connected directly to the CPU while the rest comes from the chipset. Other than that, you also get SATA ports still in case if you still want to use hard drives for storage purpose. And of course, it has a reasonable amount of USB ports at the back. So the amount of USB it has here is, I would say reasonable because it's still a mid-end motherboard. So you cannot have anything less than five or six because that's totally unreasonable for a board at this kind of price range. So that's pretty much for the layout for now. And here's my experience with the board when it comes to usage, gaming, and overclocking. For gaming, honestly, if you're not going much with high clock on the CPU, the Z690 Force Wi-Fi can satisfy most of your needs because based on our tests in the past few days, few weeks, the performance between this board and the higher-end Z690 board is 
almost negligible and honestly you can say that it's pretty much the same for most users and in case if you wonder if the DDR5 memory will do any difference when it comes to the speed well as of now we don't really see any significant improvement between DDR5 4800 to DDR5 5200 so don't bother trying at the moment I say until Intel or the board partners can finally come up with a solution to actually make use of that amount of extra bandwidth and of course the game developers who will be working on the games to make use of these resources as well now for the overclocking side yes you can still do plenty of overclocking stuff with this motherboard because it's technically not to say identical but almost the same to the carbon wi-fi which some users will be using it for overclocking as well the option in the BIOS is pretty much the same. You can do a lot of adjustments, especially on the power limit. And speaking of power limit, because many of you might have known that the 12th gen Intel CPU will be drawing some interesting amount of powers and it will cause the CPU temperature to go pretty high if you're not using a good cooler to tame it down. So inside that option, you can just tune down the power, set the power limit probably to 240, 150 to keep the temperature under control while still getting a reasonable amount of performance out of the 12th gen because it's a really powerful CPU at this moment. Now while the performance is pretty much very reasonable for most users, I do have my complaints for this motherboard. It's not really a complaint but it's just a random rant because compared to some of the Z690 motherboards we have tried uh, I noticed that the average temperature is rather high when it comes to the VRMs and chipsets from our tests during CPU stress tests, gaming tests and other load tests I noticed that the VRM temperature can actually go up to 68 degrees Celsius which is quite warm compared to some of the boards we've tested in the past which usually goes around 50 or lesser depending on the cooler design and of course the power delivery design itself while well, 68 degree on the VRM is still pretty much acceptable and safe but I would say it's best to keep the airflow good in your system just to keep the temperature under control because in our test we never really put any fan blowing directly to the VRM just to get a proper low temperature out of it without any external interference. So with a proper airflow design in your system, you'll be able to keep the temperature slightly lower, i say. And that goes the same for the chipset as well because during some of our tests, it will also go around 60 65 degrees celsius in which it will also affect the temperature on your ssd as well and so yeah that's pretty much it of my experience sharing with you guys on the msi mpg z690 force wi-fi here so all in all i will say this is still a very reasonable motherboard for the early adopters who just want to get a taste of the Intel latest 12th gen core processors without spending a lot on the extra premium features which honestly not even some of the enthusiasts will be using because those accessories will probably be left in the box and collect dust so if you only want to enjoy the benefits and experience the Intel 12th gen core processors earlier than anyone else this is one of the options you can consider for because of the price and speaking of the price because of the current shortage you can only get a 12th gen CPU together with the motherboard itself so depending on what CPU you will be pairing with this motherboard the motherboard itself will cost roughly 1700 to 1800 ringgit depending on the seller of course so if you're going with 
an i9, you'll probably end up with roughly 4,000 ringgit, <laughs> which is still acceptable, I would say, if you can afford it. Price will go down over time, of course, but we won't know when, so that's something for us to look forward to in the coming months. And so that's all for this video today. Do let us know what you think of this motherboard or the new 12th gen Intel core processors. What do you have in mind? Will you upgrade or will you rather wait until the price go down or perhaps the next gen when it's finally come? So that's all for now and I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.